welcome to this uh, segment on average representation of uh, switching power poles. And uh, the reason we want to do this is uh, we would like to design the feedback controller and therefore we need to remove the switching information from uh, the switching power pole. And also we can use this for studying the, the dynamic behavior of uh, such converters where we really don't need at least uh, as a first cut, the switching information. So let's look at uh, the pulse width modulation that goes on uh, in these uh, switching power poles. And uh, here I have shown the representation in the form of a buck converter. But basically, we can think of this as a bipositional switch it's in the up position when uh, and the, this uh, switching signal is one, otherwise in the down position. And uh, this uh, uh, switching signal takes on the values one or zero, and that is based on the comparison between the control voltage and uh, this uh, ramp signal V sub R, which is shown in, the, uh, in figure B as a sawtooth waveform. And uh, you can see that when uh, the control signal V sub C is greater than the ramp voltage, uh, this uh, switching signal Q is one, otherwise it's zero. And uh, so therefore, uh, you know, we have this duty ratio D, which is really the time during which the switch is up divided by the switching time period. So uh, that uh, brings up uh, a, an essential element here. That, that is that this average representation is approximate. But this approximate representation is valid if this uh, control voltage uh, V sub C is changing very slowly compared to the switching frequency. So you can say that if, the, uh, if this uh, frequency at which this control signal is varying is let's say one tenth or even smaller compared to the the switching frequency, then this representation is uh, quite valid. So what this block is showing is that the duty ratio that we get, and as you can see from this geometric uh, uh, comparison here, uh, that it's really the ratio of the control voltage divided by the peak of this uh, sawtooth waveform here. And of course, this D is in the range between zero and one. So uh, we look at uh, this uh, average representation of a switching power pole in CCM. And once again, we should remember that uh, this really, you know, can be represented as this switch here. You say either it's in the up position or in the down position. And we will look at it under so-called continuous conduction mode, where this current is flowing continuously. So this is always greater than zero here, okay? Uh, maybe, uh, so it's always greater than zero. Let's put it that way. So the, the on time of the switch that is uh, in the up position is dictated by that comparison that we saw in the previous slide. So the, that's giving us the duty ratio. And you can see that in uh, absolute steady state where things are absolutely repeating from one cycle to the next, we can use uh, this uh, uppercase D for duty ratio. And uh, in that case, uh, the, the voltages and currents at the voltage port, which we designate by the subscript V sub P, and the voltage and, current, voltage and current at the current port, which we designate at the, at, by the subscript C sub P, they are related by this uh, duty ratio, the average values that is. And these average values are represented in uh, absolute steady state with this symbol V and I, uppercase V and uppercase I. So these are used in um, uh, absolute steady state. Let's uh, agree on that. And uh, so the average representation that we see is shown uh, in figure B, which is, uh, you know, if the two voltages are related by this expression, and two currents are related by this expression, then we can represent these two equations by an ideal transformer because that's what happens 
in an ideal transformer. The, the voltage is related by turns ratio. So, you know, this turns ratio turns out to be 1 over D uh, or one, uh, 1 to D, I should say. And uh, the currents are related by, again, the, uh, the inverse of the turns ratio because the ampere turns uh, going into, uh, on both sides should be equal. So, uh, in that case, this, this current here and this current over here, they are related by uh, this expression over here. So now uh, uh, that is true in uh, absolute uh, DC steady state, but uh, uh, what we mean here by dynamic condition is that uh, things are changing, but they are changing much more slowly uh, as compared to the rate at which we have the switching frequency, other uh, compared to the switching frequency. So instead of using uppercase letters, what we have done here is to use uh, uh, these symbol uh, bar on the top over here. Similarly, for voltage, we have this bar which represents these uh, uh, these quantities. They are not absolutely DC. Uh, they are average values, but they are not DC. So you can think of them as cycle by cycle average, which uh, changes very slowly, these averages. Okay, so uh, based on that, uh, we have uh, this dynamic representation here. And uh, once again, the two voltages are related by this equation, and these two currents are related by this equation over here. And the, the reason I think, uh, not I think, <laughs> the reason why we have the, the bottom part of these transformers connected together, because we want to uh, ensure that, you know, we don't imply any isolation. Uh, because as you can see in the actual circuit uh, on the left, there is no electrical isolation between the input and the output. So that's why the bottom parts are connected. And you can also see the symbol over here for this ideal transformer because this can pa pass DC as well as AC because this is just a mathematical representation. No transformer as such can pass uh, a DC in steady state, but this is just a mathematical representation. And the other thing we see that uh, we have the the average uh, representation of the PWM block over here. So what we can do is we can take uh, the average uh, representation of the switching power pole and we can implement that into three uh, DC to DC conversions. So one of them is this buck here and uh, you can see that the switching representation is as shown here. Once, we are, once again we are talking about CCM and therefore this inductor current is always greater than zero. And uh, so if you can replace this uh, switching power pole with the average representation, uh, we get uh, this circuit over here. And, uh, and as, as you can see, we are using in a dynamic sense. So this output voltage uh, is shown as an average, but with a bar on top. Uh, <coughs> so it's uh, pretty, pretty much DC but may change uh, slowly. And similarly for this inductor current, and of course the power flow in the circuit is in this direction here. So now uh, this one is for boost over here, and uh, the power flow, uh, if you don't uh, flip the circuit around, is uh, in this direction as shown over here. And uh, so the input is on the right-hand side, and the output is on the left-hand side, and uh, IL is as defined over here in this circuit, but we have to note that in this case, the transistor is in the bottom position as compared to the buck converter. So uh, uh, when we apply the average representation of the switching uh, power pole, uh, then the turns ratio uh, in this transformer is not 1 to D, rather it's 1 to 1 minus D over here, because uh, uh, when this uh, uh, switching signal is high, uh, this uh, transistor is actually turned on and uh, switch in that case, if you were to represent it like this, is in the bottom position. So that's the reason why instead of uh, D over here, we have to use 1 minus D as the, uh, for this uh, turns ratio here of this ideal transformer. <coughs> and uh, then uh, this brings us to this buck boost converter here. <coughs> 
and here you can see that uh, uh, we, once again we have replaced the average switching power pole by this uh, uh, ideal transformer with, with controllable turns ratio and uh, uh, so there is no uh, uh, in fact uh, in this case the switching power pole is implemented exactly like the, the buck converter where you have transistor on the top so the turns ratio for this transformer is 1 to D as in a buck converter. So this uh, very seamlessly allows, allows us to represent all three by replacing the switching power pole by its average representation. So in the, uh, you know, we can sort of uh, validate this by means of a simulation and that's what we are doing uh, using PSPICE over here and uh, this is for a buck boost converter. Uh, it is drawn in a conventional manner where most people draw it like this. So this is the switching element over here and uh, uh, this is the input voltage and this is the output voltage over here like this and uh, <coughs> please note the polarity here uh, gets reversed and uh, then we, uh, we first have the circuit in steady state and at uh, 3 milliseconds we close the switch and cause additional load to come across the output here in this circuit here. And uh, we will do the same thing uh, using this uh, average representation here, like this here. Here uh, we have drawn the, the circuit, uh, is the same circuit where it's drawn a little differently and uh, where you can easily see the switching power pole. And uh, this switching power pole here is represented by this average uh, representation like this over here. So here you have inductor, you have the input voltage, and you have the output voltage across here like this over here. Okay, so this, uh, and then we once again close the switch at three milliseconds to, to represent extra load that comes across this circuit here. So here are the waveforms. And uh, you can see that uh, if you look at just zero in on the inductor current waveform here, uh, the switching waveform is shown in green. And of course, uh, it, uh, it has the switching frequency information in it, whereas the average waveform uh, use from the average representation, that is shown in red. And you can see that they pretty much uh, uh, follow each other. Red is pretty much uh, in between the switching waveform. Uh, it is not identical and that shouldn't be because uh, you know, some of the parasitics that's associated with uh, uh, the switching uh, converter like the diode voltage drop, the resistance of the switch and all those things are totally neglected in the average representation. But uh, they are pretty much uh, following each other. And the second one is the, this one here is the voltage across the inductor here. <coughs> uh, so uh, we can also say that this average representation applies to switching power pole when it is designed to have bidirectional power flow through this, uh, uh, through this uh, pole. So this uh, bidirectional switching power pole is made up of uh, a buck converter uh, with these two devices shown here. And also in parallel, so these two points are connected together, uh, a boost converter in parallel like this here. And we'll see that when this current IL is positive uh, in this uh, figure B, uh, then only the devices uh, comprising the buck converter conduct. So when the signal Q is one here, uh, the transistor is turned on. And if this inductor current is positive, it's flowing in this direction over here as shown. And you can see that when Q is one, this current flows through this upper transistor like this. And when Q becomes zero, uh, that means uh, uh, this transistor is turned on, this one over here, but because of the nature, because of the direction of this current, uh, this current flows through the diode over here, like this here. So what this uh, is showing is that uh, in a, uh, in, a, in this bidirectional power pole, when the inductor current is positive, uh, in that case, only the two devices 
making up the buck converter would conduct. Uh, transistor when Q is equal to 1, this diode when Q is equal to 0, okay. So now let us see what happens when uh, IL is negative uh, as will be the case if you had a boost converter when the power is flowing from right to left and in that case we see that when Q is equal to 1 uh, and uh, so th this transistor is on but uh, the current will not flow through that because of its direction. It will rather flow through this diode over here, okay. And uh, similarly when Q is equal to 0, that means Q uh, complement is equal to 1, then the current would flow through this transistor over here like this. So what this shows is that in the uh, in this uh, bidirectional power pole, when IL is negative, in that case uh, are the current, the current port let's say is negative, in that case the the two devices consist making up the boost converter would uh, conduct of course one at a time. So the other thing to notice is that uh, when Q is equal to, to 1, uh, you, you see that either uh, this uh, transistor is conducting or when Q is equal to 1, uh, in that case uh, this diode is conducting. So essentially if you were to think of this as a, a switching power pole here, forget about the details, think of the switching power pole here. When Q is equal to 1, the switching power pole would always be in the top direction, regardless of the direction of current. So that is what is shown here. So regardless of whether IL is positive or negative, this switch is in the top position if Q is equal to 1 or it will be in the bottom position like this if Q is equal to 0. So uh, that is the thing we saw in, uh, uh, you know, in previous uh, implementations of uh, this switching power pole and therefore once again the, the average representation is uh, by means of this ideal transformer with uh, controllable turns ratio where this turns ratio is 1 to D. So this uh, brings us to, uh, to the last slide, which is a summary, uh, which shows that uh, we can, on an average, represent the switching power pole, provided that things are not changing very fast. And by that we mean, uh, you know, the, the variation, for example, in the control voltage, which is determining the duty ratio of the switch, is at a frequency uh, one tenth or lower compared to the switching frequency. So we can use this for designing the feedback controller uh, using the linear control theory that we are familiar with and also it is very useful for studying the dynamic behavior of these converters uh, where we can uh, approximate this by this average representation and uh, then we can study this dynamic behavior and the simulation would be much faster because we are no longer limited by the resolution of the switching time period, okay. So, so you know, of course, this is approximate and we, uh, we need to be aware of that, but uh, it's a much uh, better way at least to get started.